uh, I work uh, with many DevOps teams, but I want to tell you a story about one DevOps team who was my second and third DevOps team. Because I think that uh, uh, the tools and the practice we use can be useful for uh, a company if you have to decide if it's worth to make a DevOps team. Um, does a software company need a DevOps team really? I don't know. A, 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 a team of people specialized in DevOps activity. Um, and what is the way of working of this team? Uh, because it's quite, quite tricky, it's not so simple. Uh, how should the team deal with uh, some innovation? You know that sometimes happen that things change in the software industry. And uh, sometimes uh, everything is uh, become old very quickly. So uh, we are used to change. And then uh, some question at the end. So uh, just two words about me. Uh, I'm from the dev side. I, uh, it's my fault. I developed software for a long time and I still have this habit to think about uh, to build something that works. Um, so, and now uh, I was training this team uh, uh, and I work for a Jai 42 that is a company, so it's a company worldwide, it's a coaching company. So we uh, essentially make training and coaching, helping um, company to change the way of working. So adopt new technology, new way of working and so on. Um, this uh, this scenario can, uh, is a, a not in cancer with the merge of two e-commerce company. One was from the Netherlands and one was from uh, uh, Germany and uh, uh, Denmark. Uh, so at the end of the merge we have uh, this company uh, operating in 10 countries and uh, there's a, a quarter and a remote location. I don't want to talk about all the complexity of, to deal with the uh, so big company. I will respect the, the focus on what I was doing. So working with five teams in a quarter, three remote teams, uh, maybe all our scrum team uh, or scrumish, something similar to scrum. You know, uh, the world is not a perfect place. So. And a three more team that was very, very smart people. Uh, they were completely autonomous and they had full stack developers, so they don't need help, uh, they don't need any Python or CI tra uh, training, so we don't care about them. But uh, you see that we come back. Um, so uh, this uh, eight or 11 teams need some assistance. And uh, we have uh, uh, the people were two departments, two different departments, one in the Netherlands, one in Germany, that uh, give infrastructure project uh, and uh, logistic, uh, the office and uh, service for the team. Uh, mainly we start with uh, CI and then uh, we need uh, to distribute uh, virtual machines and so on. So, this 14 people uh, build the infrastructure for all the other team. The other team are mainly developing uh, application for uh, iOS and uh, uh, Android for, for the e-commerce side. And some backend, but not, not so, so much backend. Okay, what is the problem? Why we have the great idea that we need a, a, a DevOps team. The problem were simply the ops are too slow. It took one month to have a, a rack of, uh, of computer, uh, link in the network, uh, was, the ops were really too slow. Slow support to the team. Uh, if you have to fix some uh, part of the CI, it took two weeks to, to have to if you need to change some virtual machine, it needs a lot of time to, to fix it. CI stay behind what is needed. Uh, it's not easy 
to follow uh, 11 teams that uh, build continuously something new with new technology and a lot of people use uh, JavaScript, you know? So there's a lot of library, a lot of new stuff that can uh, Infrastructure is distributed, infrastructure demand is growing. Much more infrastructure than anything. So, first solution, first solution from an IT DevOps team, you put all the people together, the people that with the knowledge all together, and uh, put every request in a single backlog. This is the very basic solution we adopt. Use a Kanban board to visualize everything that's going on. So you need a big wall, a lot of post-it, put everything on the wall and see what's happening. Push the boss practice, because at the end, if you don't know the boss practice, you cannot perform it well. So at the end, you need to know Python very well, you need to, to do the real work, so we need to do that. And Scrum team were the DevOps specialist in the team until independent. This was a very strong uh, affirmation because we need to split all the, the smart guy, one smart guy for each Scrum team to uh, work with the team, to, to teach the team to use the new, new way of working. Okay, let's see. Uh, any any part in small detail very quickly uh, how to form a, a team of 14 people 14 is too much too many people for for uh, for a single team the, the strong limit is 11 and there's a the, the, there's a sense for this because to to make 14 people agree is not so easy 14 technical people is practically impossible. Okay, so we we take it very very lightly. So just a week in synchronization of an hour, daily stand up and uh, use appropriate new room and tools for remote meeting because two of them were in Germany and one in Denmark, and we were in Amsterdam. So very very difficult to keep everything in sync. So we have a kickstart. In the kickstart, we um, make some training with the practice that I will explain in a moment. So we need uh, two days of uh, training and then, um, do you know, uh, it's called Sprint Zero. So is uh, um, you take a puppet uh, problem and resolve in a day to see, uh, to see if everything works before you use uh, a, a, a practice in the real world. So you take one, work, one day of work uh, to make uh, a fake workshop uh, on a fake problem to see if everything works. And then we start to, to, to work on that. Second part, the backlog. <coughs> who who knows uh, what is a backlog? Like a scrum backlog. Okay, so I, I can do it quick. Uh, maximum size, backlog is prioritized. Um, backlog item as a standard format. So we use a user story as a scrum team to describe a software or something similar to software. Uh, task correction is very stupid to use a user story if you have simply to back up the system. Back up the system, you understand exactly what it means. So it's an action. And specification, as before, for well-known procedural activity, some ops activity are so well described that it is a really a waste of time to really describe them as a, a user story. It's a waste of time. If it works, don't fix it, please. Okay? So, specification works very well in some, some, in some way. Why don't use it? Okay, so we have only three uh, mm, backlog item types. And then, we start, this is the tricky part, we want to visualize all the uh, backlog items and this is not easy because uh, uh, there are some parts that is easy to put uh, in uh, common boards, something not. And we use value stream map or some service to better understand it 
who knows what is Daniel Stern Matthews from Lean Manufacturing? No one? Okay, okay. Daniel Stern Matthews is like uh, uh, when you have a service, when you build a service, you can describe the, uh, the uh, life cycle of your task uh, um, and uh, put uh, the effort and the value for the customer in each activity and then measure it. And you find uh, is a very good way to find bottleneck in your uh, in your organization. It's uh, something that comes from Toyota system, to, from Toyota manufacturing, but it works really well also in software. So if you have a let me say a bug life cycle and you use Jira to track the bug, uh, you can make a value stream map uh, of the of the life cycle of the bug. So see where you where it wait or waste time, okay? And uh, it's quite useful to understand how, how it works. Um, static method is something that comes from the Kanban system, the Anderson and so on. Um, it's a way to understand how the system behaves when you produce a service. We say, okay, everything in software, we don't produce product in reality, we produce some kind of services. Okay, we produce software, but when you think about the software, the software is a service to the customer, you can also think about that. You never finish to build the software. There's only maintenance, there's only something to do next, so it is a real service, not, not a finished product to the software. So, study method is very good to analyze your service and to see how it works. But there's a limitation. Uh, we found this very useful in some place and that a waste, a totally waste of time in another. Okay, so let's let some services are too new to be successful in Muppet. You don't know how it works. It's the first time that I use Kubernetes. So uh, how much time do you take? I don't know, I never did it. <laughs> so I have to try. If you don't know, you, you cannot use static. Uh, some services are too complex to be successful in Muppet, and this is very tricky. I want to spend some minutes on this. Um, this is static. It's a very simple procedure. Uh, I don't want to in, enter in the details. That's the link. Uh, I will upload uh, the, the slide, obviously. But if you put static and Kanban, you find a lot of free documentation on that. And we, it, it, it is not, it's not trivial, but it's not impossible to, to work. It's eight step in which you understand what is the goal of the service, what is the source of satisfaction. This is not so easy to find the source of, uh, of the satisfaction of a service. It can be tricky. Uh, analyze demand, analyze capacity. Model the workflow. In step five, you can use value stream mapping to model the workflow. If you don't understand well the flow, use Jira to uh, make an analysis of uh, what people works on, on what service and blah, blah, blah. And discover the class of service design Kanban system. Okay. It's not easy. Um, you normally, this is the result I expect. So I have uh, two, three, one, I don't know, entry point, and I have a state machine that describe my uh, process until the end, uh, the production of my service. Let me say, uh, this is the two entrance for a, a bug fixing. Then there's a um, people from the UX that check it, and then there's people from the uh, backend, and then uh, someone fix it, and uh, put it uh, on, deploy it on the, on a, a dev, uh, on a dev server, test it, and everything is okay, deploy it in production. This is a process, okay? Very simple steps. Uh, you cannot have loops. This is the only uh, real strong uh, um, limitation of this model. 
you cannot have loops. You have to proceed in this way until the end. If you can map your service in this way, you have a lot of benefit and it's quite easy to build uh, a, a system to visualize the, the, the work you, you, you do. But if you work on software, many times you find this. I really don't know. This is something to do. This is something I'm doing, and this is something done. If you work uh, in um, extreme programming or TDD way, you take a user story, you write the test, so you make an hypothesis, and then write the code against the test. And when you finish, you check it if it works. Oh no, it's not enough. Okay, write another test. So it's, it's a complete cycle. So you don't know what are the, the, the steps, uh, the internal steps, uh, because it's an emergent architecture. And this way of working is mapped in this way. <coughs> and this is not really useful. So when you find something like this, alarm. Maybe I'm using the wrong tool. Maybe it's better to look at some different tool. Static is not really... Oh, you can do it, but it's not use, useful. Or you can find this, a zillion input state, another zillion possibly output state, and the mess in the middle. So uh, when you have, uh, uh, if you try to, um, <coughs> to make static of all your bugs in the company, you find this, because you have uh, a lot of possibly input, a, a lot of possibly output uh, and a lot uh, of combination of people that can fix that but not in this case uh, but if it's urgent uh, then uh, I go too fast blah 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 this is not working in this way in this way I recommend to not use static because it's useless you waste a lot of time in this so uh, my way to use static it's a very good tool, but use with, with care. Uh, apply static method at the fixed time box. So the first time, okay, it takes two hours, three hours to analyze one single service. It's, it's not important. When you are used to do this, uh, give, uh, give a fixed time box. If you break the time box, think it twice. <laughs> maybe you are not so confident about this, maybe this service is too new, maybe it's a complex server, uh, service, so you really cannot uh, visualize it in a linear way. Uh, you have to use something different. Ask the team if they learn something valuable from the activity. When you finish the static, there's two kinds. Of the, uh, the people that built this Kanban board, do they learn something from this activity? If the answer is no, stop it because you are uh, making something obvious or something that are completely out of, of their knowledge. Normally, uh, the team that uh, build this, uh, uh, doing the static, finds a lot of uh, discover about the service, like, oh, this is a bottleneck, maybe we, we, can, uh, we can work on this. Three, build the Kanban board with the smallest possible number of column and row. Please, not too much complexity in the Kanban board is, is useless, really, it's useless. Merge with other service and verify it again after two weeks. After two weeks, if you use it and it's useful, continue to use it or throw it away. It's a waste of time, okay? Um, enough for the, uh, for the Kanban part. Uh, the box practice. This is quite simple. We make a lot of training. We divide the training and workshop. First we make the training with the uh, theoretical part and then workshop on the real part. So we, we select a part of the product and build it again in, uh, in the new technology. Nothing, nothing really. Um, the Scrum team will have an IT specialist until independent. So 
one of the DevOps team stay uh, with the software team for four days a week, working with the team. It's the only way the team can uh, understand DevOps uh, working. So some training, some workshop, but, but the, the experience can be replaced by training. Okay? Okay, after four weeks, we have a single backlog, Kanban board working quite well, better support, new CI improvement, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it works. Was not perfect, but it works. Um, what is the cons? The ops are still slow. Um, ops and T have different visualization needs. The Kanban mode works quite well, but the ops have different needs from the developer. So it uh, needs different type of Kanban board. Um, splitting the board was uh, the right solution. Uh, long stand up, longer than 30 minutes. People need to talk, need to talk about technical part, needs to synchronize. 50 minutes is not enough for a brand new team. So 14 people are too many persons to synchronize in 15 minutes. Uh, stand up about uh, half an hour, an hour and so on. Not sustainable <coughs> piece. Not sustainable piece because of the infrastructure guy were too stressed by this because the rhythm was too high for uh, one week cycle was too high for infrastructure. So it does not really work well. Okay, second iteration. Two weeks cycle. So relaxing a little bit the, the cycle. Introduce the retrospective because the guys that was uh, the, were embedded in the Scrum team learned that Product owner and retrospective works, so they want to introduce in the in the DevOps team. So have a product owner to manage and prioritize the backlog. There was a long discussion about priority of the backlog, but because everyone has his own idea. So okay, let's try to put just one to decide the priority. Product owner, you know, product owner was Scrum, something similar. Planning every week. Retrospective every two weeks. Zero specialized board to trace off ops differently. Spikes and pilot. Why spikes and pilot? Because the scrum team teams need more relaxing place where experimenting. They don't want to experiment in production. This is a very good idea, not experimenting in production. So have the the the, the place where to experiment is a pilot. So I give you this infrastructure, and this time you here it is like a playground, but, but uh, with the real software. So you can test the new stuff uh, in safe place, not in production. Thank you, because we have something to do. Okay, uh, this was not really working. After two weeks, uh, we changed it immediately. So. It, it, this was not, not so good, uh, a very good idea because uh, uh, the planning does not really work for us. Uh, planning like Scrum based on um, estimation does not really work for ops. Uh, it's uh, something that is useless because ops is more deterministic. They have uh, a, a lot of uh, Risky that does not depend from from their control is outside their control. So planning is quite impossible sometimes. Sometimes, um, team retrospective works very well. Um, they introduce technical reviews. You know, technical reviews is the part in which uh, you test if your product is exactly what expected from the specification at the beginning. And they introduce a technical review for uh, for the for the DevOps part. It was not so easy, but it was a good idea at the end. Uh, was introduced by the pilot, and then um, everyone that was uh, as soon as the Scrum team was uh, independent was able to handle its own CI and 
uh, Ansible script, uh, the guys return to the to the team because uh, uh, the team needs more power for infrastructure. They they need to free more people for infrastructure. Okay, uh, three months later, uh, the original team was split in three sub team. I know I hate silos, but these are three completely different worlds, and then uh, infrastructure and production merged after, after a while. Okay, but operation is a completely different set of two in, in this case. So there was a, a, a single team uh, of, of, of was 60 people in that, that moment, but there was three sub teams. Some things because one works with the Kanban board, the other two works uh, uh, basically with something like Scrum, so based on, uh, on iteration. Better performance, very few requests for specialists for the Scrum team. This is the most important achievement. The Scrum teams become quite independent. Uh, so the, 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 the level of a request in three months dropped because they were able to deal with their own CI and uh, we defined a very, uh, very clear line between uh, the, comp the competence of the DevOps team and the competence of the Scrum team. So uh, until this line you can do whatever you want uh, if you touch this file, we don't accept this uh, in, the, uh, in the repository. Okay, it was very clear. You can deal only with some part of the system. The other part is fixed, or was, it, I think, um, the chaos. Um, and in spite of that, there was positive, uh, positive feedback from the team. Um, on the contrary, some operation uh, were slowed down by the new organization because uh, uh, meetings, uh, synchronization, and so on costs, and um, some some meetings are not so useful. So there was a slowdown uh, in in the ops. And uh, at the some scrum team used technology, different technology, newer technology than the ops team. That was brand new. Some guys starting to, to run faster <coughs> than expected, uh, mainly in the testing environment, uh, was very, very, very difficult. Okay, so until now it's quite successful. And then, do you remember the three team, very smart, alone, okay? And then they succeed. These guys were data scientists. And uh, they want to put in production something of, uh, with machine learning model based on Kafka Q. And uh, everyone said, what? What is that? And uh, was technology that uh, half of the DevOps team does not know, know was three years ago, so it was not so uh, known. And, uh, and they want to go to production as soon as possible because the proof of concept was a success. So we have to put in production everything very quickly. And the demand of hardware was so impressive that people start laughing, saying, okay, <laughs> we are completely fine. Okay. And uh, mm, okay, what was the approach? Exactly what I, uh, I told you. Okay, don't panic, let's start again. Any innovation is disruptive, so our your old way of working maybe is not working anymore. So okay, let's start again, guys. What do you need? Uh, we need the service uh, built in this way. Okay, let's start it if, 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 if start it works. Let's describe it. Try to understand how it works, and in the meantime, I send someone, someone of, of the team go in these three teams and start working with, with the guys directly because it's, there's no other way. Define the most risky service around a pilot. So two, three weeks pilot to understand this technology is very important. Adapt the organization to the team. 
nowadays this team is uh, okay is 25 people is not more a team so uh, that is uh, i think five teams now and uh, they are still working in a completely different way when i i work with them because this is the, the way uh, we adapt and there's no one devops team but two or three devops teams so what are the conclusion of this devops team can work yeah can work in some some part is not a silos team you you think that you work for the other team for the production team from the operation for internal so uh, be be very ready to split the team and reassemble the team okay uh, delegate as much as possible delegate as much <coughs> as possible okay uh, single backlog and standard format simply works we never f regret the, the single backlog because at least you see everything and then you can specialize it but the single backlog is a not a bad idea uh, adopt a way of working that better fit your service not your current organization this is the most difficult part because it's very easy to repeat what you know um, start again every time that is uh, an innovation is not so easy but uh, it's is something that works. Use a particular approach to select what is the best for your situation. A particular approach is try it, measure it, measure it. It's very important to measure. Declare what you want to do and if you don't, return back and change it. Use static to understand your service and pilot. Safe to fail experimentation is key, is key to deal with the complexity of innovation. Um, I don't put any description for pilots, but if you look at the internet, like safe to fail experiment and complexity experiment, you can find a lot of canvas that describe how to run a pilot. Um, some uh, team in extreme programming use also Spike, but Spike are uh, in for just one team internal to build knowledge so at the end you, you destroy the profit spike is an activity that uh, the developer do, uh, do to acquire knowledge and uh, the output is uh, normally a workshop for the rest of the team of uh, all the teams to share the knowledge while pilot you can do uh, you can run pilot with multiple team teams uh, and you can run also in production if it, if it's safe to run that in production if it's safe so something that you have a plan b or something similar okay is is much less aggressive that's all thank you